I think it goes back to communication again. Um, I, when I first moved to Kentucky five years ago, I noticed that there was a pretty big disconnect between um, K-12 education, higher education, and even the entities that um, were over, over all of those. For example, I didn't feel like KDE really corresponded much with EPSB and CPE, and there, to me that was a big triangle that was missing connections. And I think Senate Bill 1 has really forced people and, and um, organizations to communicate with each other and work together. And I think the um, higher education network workshops, like the one we're here today with, is a good example. I mean, we never thought that KCM and CCLD and P20 and CPE and KACTE would all come together and, and put, to, put on one workshop together and have different parts and work together. So um, I think the communication and the organization of it all, it it's, it's can be sometimes forced, but I think it's going to be a really good opportunity for everybody to learn more about each other and create some connections that have never been made. I see the best outcome of Senate Bill 1 to really be for all of us in education, K-12 and post-secondary, to take a stronger look at what's happening. Uh, we tend to focus so much on, on our sector. Uh, the K-12 world really looks at that, post-secondary looks at that, without an understanding of how things bridge those gaps. And so I think that we're all going to have to learn a lot more about what college readiness really means to us. And a lot of this is about indicators of, of success. Uh, but I think beyond just what college readiness means and how likely students may be to, to come into college and be successful, I think we have to get the big picture here. This isn't just about getting people through this first year or this first level of math or this first level of English. This is about getting more Kentuckians educated and, and to finish eventually a credential and enter the workforce. So we, we have to think about the big picture. This is kind of a baby step there because it's what we can measure today. But we can't lose sight of the fact that this isn't just about numbers in one year. This is about big picture, better educated Kentuckians. I think having a common language in many ways, uh, and again, just kind of going back to that idea that we're looking at standards in a different way. Um, you know, we've all worked with standards for a very long time, and I think oftentimes it's been really easy to fragment our instruction or take a look at teaching in a way that breaks things up into small pieces and it moves us away from meaningful instruction and I think it also moves us away from facilitating very meaningful learning for our students uh, in higher ed and, um, and in the classrooms as well. Senate Bill 1 helps us formalize things that many of us were already doing and that's the good news for Kentucky. Many of our colleges and uh, universities were already really working on a lot of uh, college readiness strategies. Uh, for example, at Moorhead State University, uh, for many years we have been working with our developmental faculty, the faculty who teach developmental courses, for example, who uh, have been paying attention to how do we make sure that students are successful that come in who are not college ready, and how we make sure that they are able to graduate. We have wonderful statistics that we've been collecting for a number of years, for example, in uh, uh, developmental reading courses and the students who go through the developmental reading. But when I look at it from a broader perspective statewide, um, Senate Bill 1 was exactly the right thing to happen uh, through the legislature and uh, helps us formalize many of those things that we were already doing. Um, we know that we're doing many of the right strategies because it fits so well into Senate Bill 1. Um, at Moorhead State University, we have a Summer Success Academy. We started that a number of years ago, and that's an, a, a summer academy for students who actually have uh, the ACT scores that have identified them as needing some sort of developmental courses. Uh, they can come during the summer and actually take their developmental courses during the summer so they can start ready to go in the fall. We also have uh, academic uh, academy um, workshops for students who are on probation. Uh, those are workshops that students are required to go to and it really helps them identify what were some of the things that um, prevented you from being successful this semester. Here are some strategies that you might think about to, as you go forward. Those sorts of supports for students um, really are helpful for the students to make sure that they are successful and that they do uh, graduate. 
I think the best outcome of Senate Bill 1 is that it does uh, give us a common language across P-12 and higher education. I think that it does set expectations for P-12 students and higher ed will know um, more about those expectations for P-12 students as well P-12 educators. Uh, they will know about the expectations in higher education. So I think that common language is going to help with transition issues from, from P-12 to higher ed. I think the best outcome of Senate Bill 1 is going to be collaboration. Um, I think we're already seeing, uh, as I have, I have just come back from a couple of national meetings, and we're the only state talking, uh, school districts and colleges working hand in hand. And I think a wonderful outcome is that it's starting us to think differently. We're not having to hunt research, we have it. Um, and it's, it's really causing conversations to occur that typically had not occurred. It's creating um, um, a partnership between school districts thinking of professors and people in colleges as experts as opposed to having to go someplace else. Um, we're not 100% there yet, but we're headed that direction. And I think the more knowledgeable we all are of what it's taking to, in working together for s student success, then I think that we're all going to have that working relationship that's going to put us on that cutting edge in the forefront. And we're not going to have to worry about accountability because we're going to be focusing on the, the positive outcomes. Um, and, and we're going to get results as, as a, an outcome. The total outcome, and I think that will be the best, is college readiness, career readiness. Um, there are many things we could say about higher ed. I've spent most of my career working with high school students and then in preparing teachers to teach high school students. And I think we take a lot of the brunt of uh, the accusations of why aren't they ready for those freshman comp classes or college algebra. Uh, I think if we can clearly articulate the skills that students need that will help them to develop the writing skills, that will help them to develop even the reading skills at the high school level. I'll admit when I started teaching English, uh, it was I'm a teacher of literature, I'm not a teacher of reading, but I was soon converted that first year. I realized I've got to learn how to teach these high school students to read. We realize that now in our teacher prep. But I think if we can overcome those two, I think we're a long way to really fulfilling the mission that they had in mind for our students and the children of Kentucky. Consistent language across groups, uh, across faculty for us, uh, uh, faculty and our um, P-12 colleagues that we're all using the same language or much more so using the same language than we might have in the past. Uh, that's probably uh, the biggest help. Since we're a standards state anyway, and we're used to using standards, I think, now that we are going to have broader based standards and are tying it to our expectations for college, we have uh, more of us will be using the same language once we all get comfortable with it. The one thing that I, that I really like about Senate Bill 1 is that it brings both higher education and K-12 education to the table, and they're talking. Uh, Typically, in the past, historically, they pointed the fingers at each other and said, this is your fault, this is your fault. Not unlike uh, K-12 education, did. the high schools pointed it at middle schools, middle schools pointed it at elementary, and elementary pointed it at, at uh, parents. Uh, that's not the case right now, and, and that's exciting. But the bottom line is, we're all in this together, and if I don't go to, to higher ed and sit down and, and, and lay it on the line, and then let higher ed respond and say, well, you're not doing a very good job either. Uh, then when that happens, um, then what we do is we benefit kids. Oh, by far it is the collaboration that's going on ac across all of the different levels of education. Uh, this is a P20 initiative, um, but more than that it involves all sorts of different stakeholders from the business community, from the civic groups and leaders, from the government and the legislature, uh, the Kentucky Department of Education, the Council on Post-Secondary Education, the Education Professional Standards Board, every state institution. Uh, I think I've never seen this kind of uh, uh, sort of perfect storm of stakeholders coming together and having a real dialogue about how to do this well. I think the best outcome is that there's a shared effort to make sure that our 
students are prepared for college or careers. And I think that's probably the best thing that we are working together in P20 really to make sure that that happens.